and we're with our very, very good friend Irving Ander over here at the Brooklyn Grange as he's calling a Saturday night dance. Irv, it's great to see you again. Do you remember the first year that you started calling square dancing? Well, I figured it up for some of the kids here a couple of weeks ago and they asked me how long I'd been calling and I said 52 years. And so I was 13 years old when I started. And uh, it, if you want to hear the funniest story, I'll tell you how it happened. That uh, I used to go to a lot of these kitchen parties that we had at that time. You know, there was no television. And so we'd have a, a little party at somebody's house one week and a, two, three weeks later they have one at another house. And there was a fellow from Union that used to call square dances about one an evening. But he liked liquor and he didn't have any capacity, so <laughs> after the first dance he was laying on a couch out for the evening. And so one evening everyone is saying, gee, I wish we had a square dance and nobody to call. And So I said, I can call a square dance. And of course they didn't believe it. And uh, the orchestra they had the band leader worked for us. So I used to hear him practice once or twice a week. And so I said, hey, let me try it. And so I've been calling ever since. I started calling about 1939 at the uh, Echo Grange. And uh, it was in the 40s where you came with right. Doris. And it was it after you got out of the service? It oh, must yeah. have been. Oh, yeah. yes, it was. So it was in the 40s. The first caller that I used to listen to, and I, I, that's where I really learned to call, was uh, I used to chaperone my sister to the dance in Eastford. And there was a local caller that uh, wasn't a singing caller, he was a chanting caller. Mm -hmm. But uh, I listened to him and there nothing else to do. I learned it like singing and uh, that started me off. And of course Jimmy Rhodes was one of the first singing callers that I ever heard. And uh, and my old standby was a guy in Westwood stock that's gone now. And uh, in fact, all three of these fellas are gone. And it was Dave Brockway. And uh, he would call at Esther Brooks's hall in Westwood stock and, and uh, down here in uh, East Killingly. And we all went Saturday nights. If you didn't go to the Saturday night dance, that whole week was shot because that was our one and only entertainment. Well, some of the names that come to my mind when we started dancing to you was Vic Samuels and Bob Copeland and a young fellow I think you started off, I think he may still be called Eddie Duhamel. Right, because he's sitting right up there banging that piano now. Is that right? That's Eddie. Is that Eddie? Yeah. He, and he was the one that used to do the calling? Right. Oh. And uh, so they stopped dancing at the uh, up in Quartic, and I gave him my job at Pine Lake Shores, and then he quit calling there, and uh, I was glad when he joined this orchestra, so if I want to take a week off, they get a fill-in organ player, and Eddie called. Well, the name of this group was the Weather Vanes, but how about some of the other groups? I can remember Joe Long Cozy. Joe Cozy, right, right. Right, and of course, uh, uh, the Williams Orchestra that we called with at uh, Echo Grange, and Carter Williams and uh, his sons, and that's one of the few that uh, I called with. And uh, we've, I've called with a couple of outfits from Woodstock, and uh, I enjoy calling with this group here. Was Square Dancing big before TV came on, Irving? Well, Eastern type was. That was the social focal point of the day or the week and and uh, I've sp uh, spoke to a lot of my friends in the last uh, six months people that I haven't seen in 20 years or so and uh, they've all commented on the same thing that those were the days when if you didn't go to the square dance uh, something was wrong for the whole week because that was our only entertainment and uh, we made lifelong friends and uh, one of the reasons that I kept away from Westerns was they, I enjoy this Eastern calling. I don't get rich at it, but as you see this evening, you see two generations when grandpa and grandma come, there's three generations in one set, and uh, I think I've contributed a little bit to the happiness I'm of the sure people around. Have. I've called as high as six 
nights, but it was rare. But I used to call steadily three nights a week and work every day, and uh, that was enough. When we first started square dancing, a lot of square dance festivals you used to have a big one at Yukon. What's your memories of calling at festivals of that type? Well, that was the highlight of my calling career. I would say that the time that they asked me to call at the square dance festival at Yukon was the biggest thrill of my life. And uh, I called there two years in a row, and they asked me to call a third year, and I refused because I thought that uh, it was a big honor and we should spread it around. But uh, I, I called it several other big affairs. I, I used to go to uh, New Jersey to call at a big callers jamboree there. Right, I and, remember going down there. And uh, they had 50 callers and they would dance for from noon to midnight with a time out for supper and uh, it was for the benefit of the hospitalized vets and I thought that was a great, great cause. And uh, I don't know what happened to Rod Lafarge, the guy that sponsored it, but uh, they, that finally went by the boards. And I also went to Spring Valley. Uh, did you go with me there? No, I don't believe so. But uh, it was one of the callers at New Jersey invited me there. And uh, then I've been to the uh, Callers Festival in Danbury with uh, Al Brundage. And, but nothing was as great as uh, the Square Dance Festival at Stores when you had a thousand people out there dancing and uh, that was a terrific thrill for a little farm boy to get up in front of them <laughs> and strut his stuff. If it was the money, I'd be sitting home resting up to lay a carpet Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to love it, that's all. I do, and I love the people, you know, that uh, like yourself, but, uh, we've made lifelong friends and people will come 70 miles to hear me call and that, that's quite a reward. One time that uh, I, uh, I had a celebrity from the radio of New York City, down in Greenwich Village there was a, a nightclub called the Village Barn and uh, the Tiny Clark was their caller and he came to Echo Grange one night and uh, I introduced him and we had him call a set and by the third week that he'd come up the gang booed him off the floor huh. and really I, I felt sorry for him but I was tickled that they didn't want to hear him because he, he didn't have the personality that he should have had. Well, I think the worst time that I ever had was going down to Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey to call it one of these big jamborees and uh, just oh maybe three miles before the dance floor, the dance hall we came on a bad accident and there were two girls laying out in the middle of the road and I didn't know if they were living or dead and uh, I just got into the hall and within five minutes they asked me to call hmm. and I sure wasn't in the mood but we made it. You made it. But usually if I'm tired and it looks by the time I get down there and hear the music and, and I'm pepped up even by midnight right. so I really enjoy it.